want to go to work, just want to go to do some shopping, or even just visit friends. It's like living in a prison, uh, a gigantic prison. Haaretz, the intellectual newspaper in Israel, ran a whole, like a four-page magazine article on the refugee issue. It had a picture of Tel Aviv University now and what was there before Tel Aviv University, a Palestinian village. And those refugees are in Gaza. <laughs> I think that Gaza is a main problem. There are lots of violations that you will not see in the West Bank, you will see in Gaza. We find it hard to monitor the human rights situation in Gaza because the Israeli army do not let us in. Palestinians in Gaza had been under Israeli military control for over 38 years, where 1.3 million Palestinians were crowded together to make room for 8,000 Israeli settlers. In August of 2005, Israel dismantled its settlements and military posts inside Gaza and relocated its settlers. The media, along with Israeli politicians, portrayed this as an unprecedented sacrifice. In reality, it was simply a matter of Israel finally complying with international law. Although Israel's presence inside Gaza is no longer visible, Israel will still retain ultimate control over Gaza's borders, coastal waters, and airspace, creating a virtual prison. Refugee camps, even if there was no conflict with Israel, are just uh, humanly horrible. They're so overcrowded. And you have 14 to five people living in a space. There's no place for children to be there. No streets, there are little alleys, no trees, nothing. I'm 
جبت الحلب هل الخواتم ما افرحتش عليهم كيف بتفرح عليهم والعبد وهذاك كيف بتفرح على غراب انا اه نفرح على غرابنا بايش يعني اطفالنا مش عارفه تعيش ولا احنا عارفين نعيش يعني عيشه ايش بدي اقول كلها خوف ورعب عايشين في الخوف والرعب انا بروح على المدرسه كل يوم بسمع الطخ انا بخاف من الطخ حتى بس راجف راجف لما انا اشوفه This this is what has been fired on this yes, yes, yes. This is a civilian neighborhood. There are no soldiers here. There are no there are no military installations here. This is strictly harassment to get these people to move away from the border so that the Israeli tanks can can move at will. They want these people cleansed from this area. It's that simple. And it's a way to get people to be humiliated and destitute again. In Gaza, you can see also the extent of house demolitions, much more extensive than in the, in the West Bank. The whole neighborhoods have been demolished. Hundreds of people do not have any houses anymore because they are next to settlements or next to the border, which is, of course, a clear violation of humanitarian law. People have no chance to get their personal items out. They have no chance to call for help. And this is far away from most media outlets. You are amongst the very few journalists who have even seen this. European or American journalists who have even been here because people are afraid to come or it's too hard to come. And one of the things we were told in Gaza by a very respected Palestinian uh, psychologist who had just completed a study of a thousand Palestinian children was that they had discovered that many of these Palestinian children no longer had a will to live, that they were so dehumanized and so affected by seeing their fathers particularly beaten by Israeli uh, defense forces, that the psychological condition is one of the dimensions of the conflict that is not widely understood. Palestinians called for an international observer force that would stop the violence. But this action was blocked by Israel. Finally, a group of Palestinian and Israeli human rights activists together created the International Solidarity Movement which has brought people from around the world of all ages and backgrounds to provide a non-violent international presence to try to fill this need. Rachel Corey, a 23-year-old American student, went to Gaza to join in these efforts, sending back emails to her parents. I have been in Palestine for two weeks and one hour now, and I still have very few words to describe what I see. It is most difficult for me to think about what's going on here when I sit down to write back to the United States. Something about the virtual portal into luxury. I don't know if many of the children here have ever existed without tank shell holes in their walls and the towers of an occupying army surveying them constantly from the near horizons. I think, although I'm not entirely sure, 